Okay, Booker Tov. Um, today's daf is Samach Zayin 67, um, and we pick up at the top of Samach Zayin, after two dots. Um, we, just, we did yesterday a major topic in Halacha, which is the issue about Reicha, about taste transferring through smell, um, or the status of smell. As we said, the question was to what to be when somebody ingests smell um, through their nose or through their mouth as well. You know, we spoke about how you also smell through your mouth. That's why smell is part of the definition of Mino or Mino, which was part of the debate of a vine rub. And how much if you ingest smell, is that like actually ingest, ingesting the object itself? We have a principle, one way of saying it is Tam Kikar, the taste of something is like the thing itself but to what degree do we say reach card so um anyway that was a major debate and between abai and rava and rava basically said that reicha lav milsahi reicha is not meaningful and there was this big process and we discussed that um Tosis works it out because there's a similar debate in the gemara in psach in between Rob and Levy about Reicha Milsa, and they're based on the normal quality of Psaka, whatever the conclusion would seem to be that Reicha is Milsa, he is a problem. So Rashi basically postulates like our Gemara against that Gemara and says Reicha Lav Milsa. Tosos tries to reconcile all the Sugyot and try to create some hierarchy and say that maybe there are some cases that Reicha is Milsa. Um, and the cases that Tosos specifically would say Reicha is Milsa is when there's a a very condensed type of an oven. If you're cook uh, well, the thing I should say is how does Reach transfer? So our Gemara spoke about either directly smelling something or putting a hot piece of bread on top of a barrel of wine. But the Gemara there talks about cooking things in near proximity. So Tosa says that even if we pass in Reich Hamilsa based on the Gemara over there, that would only be when they're being cooked in near proximity and in a very closed environment, meaning cooking two things in the oven at the same time. Um, open things and there's a lot of steam and so on, and therefore um, a lot of transfer. Transfer. And tells us, therefore, that would lead to a conclusion that that, <coughs> that is a problem. You can't cook mil open, uncovered milk and flesh in the oven at the same time. And I we mentioned this yesterday, and I just want to repeat it, that that is the extent to which Tosos thinks there's an issue. Like nowadays, people have two ovens, maybe four ovens because of Pesach, too. Maybe six because you want one for power, if I don't know. But anyway, know but in Tosfos, in Tosfos, there was no question that you could cook one after another, even Trefus after kosher. You could cook. And the only question was cooking them, uh, and no question you could cook them covered at the same time. The only question was uncovered at the same time. And even there, Tosa says it's that that, was the, that because we have big ovens, and I would say now because we have ventilated ovens, um, re it's really not an issue. And Tosa's really allowed cooking kosher, non kosher, uncovered stuff at the same time. And the only degree to which he had an issue was around Pesach time, because maybe Reicha is not enough to be considered like there's the tam of something, um, but maybe it's enough to be considered like there's a mashu. And by Pesach, stuff that's actually baked on Pesach itself, there would be an Isser Mashu. So that was the degree to which Tosos had that issue. Um, and I should say that, you know, that nowadays, to the degree that halacha, there's a discussion of the status of ovens, people generally follow Tosos' lead. So why is there an issue at all about ovens? Um, so the, to the degree that there is, it's because the rush introduces a new concern, not Reicha, but Zeya which is the actual um, uh, evaporated uh, liquid. Um, condensation. Uh, yeah, condensation, steam. Um, and uh, of course the irony is, is that the Gemaras didn't pay attention to Zaya. And if Zaya was an issue, why were the Gemaras only talking about Reicha? Why weren't they also talking about Zaya? So there's some that reject the Zaya concern as well. There's some that say even if Zaya is concern, a concern, again, in our larger ovens and ventilated ovens, et cetera, it's not an issue. And also if it's but covered, right? If it's covered, it's certainly not an issue, et cetera, et cetera. In Europe, they like used to so. legal ovens. Like if you if you use right. You bear, uh, made Solent to go to the bakery. Then right, so thank you for that. Yeah, one of the reasons Tosos also points out is he says that we don't have an opportunity to even, you know, because we all are using the same communal oven, so we can't control the yeah. situation, which has to do also with like affluence and how affluence and, you know, affects sort of like halacha or which types of halacha concerns people, you know, want to pay attention to. Like the people fact that now, the fact that now we have, this is exactly affluence, but the fact that now we have this huge hechsher industry means that we feel, oh, you can't eat something until you have a totally hextured and supervised whole thing. And if you go, you know, Tosis' time, and even nowadays in Europe, you make certain assumptions based on a general, you know, basic parameters of what the assumed facts are. You don't assume, and you don't go ahead and say, oh, I have to make sure that I can supervise everything out of so if you're allowed to make certain assumptions. So the same actually is true now. Now, if we're affluent and have the money, or a lot of people are, why not have two weapons? But anyway, but those are some of the issues there, yes. I've also met Jews from North Africa. Africa, 
who in the 20th century were cooking in the same ovens with Muslims. There you go. Okay, so now let's we continue. continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're cooking it or if they're whatever. Okay, let's take it. Now we continue with that with a with the, the continue. industry. Then. All right, all right. We're moving on. We're moving on. Uh, five lines from the top. Samar Zayin and Badal. We're going to continue. Samar Zayin, 67. We're going to continue with topics that are extremely uh, relevant for anybody learning Kashras. So we just did Reicha, and now we're going to continue. Zach Cloud, this is the principle, going back to the Mishnah. Anything that, again, the grammar is funny. In its pleasure, there is taste. What really means, you know, is really what it's saying. In its giving of taste, the taste actually gives, makes it is a positive taste, is, is, as opposed to Tom Lee's common negative. In some interesting debate in the Rishonim, let's say it's a neutral taste. We're going to assume mm -hmm. that neutral and positive are the same. That, uh, but if it's a negative taste, if it makes the thing taste worse, then even though you can taste it, it's not a problem. We rule that way. The scenario in the Mishnah where it's permissible that we consider that this vinegar falling on this uh, these types of a grain is uh, gives a bad taste. That's only if the grain was like uh, you know the oatmeal or whatever was hot. Okay, I will novel to increase insoninine, but it fell down to cold uh, oatmeal, your um, tichan, and then you cooked and then you heated it up. Okay, in that case, not to give me of pagam. In that case, it's like Tosaf says, What do you mean it's like? It is, but anyway, at first it gave a positive taste. Apparently, vinegar with cold oatmeal tastes good. Grits, grits, right? Grits, grits, maybe it's the same uh, maybe. Thing. Anyway, the problem is only when it's heated up, then it gives a slight off taste. So here, if the initial mixture was a positive taste, then when that non-kosher vinegar, the yainessek vinegar, got mixed up, okay, the, the oatmeal became for, forbidden. It now had a positive taste of a non-kosher food, and it became forbidden. Now you heat it up, and there's a slightly off-putting taste. Since the uh, oatmeal is still edible, it remains forbidden. Once it got a status of forbidden, it remains forbidden. Okay? And it remains forbidden. It's only if the vinegar initially fell into these hot grits. It fell into cold grits. And then you heat it up. Then it's a case where it first gave a positive taste and made it forbidden. And now the taste is a negative one, and it remains forbidden. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> whoever was writing down the did not want to repeat that whole thing a third do, time. I know, do. I know. <laughs> this is actually what they used to do in uh, Tzipuri on Erev Shabbos. This was a, a classic, I guess, Shabbos dish they would make. They would mix it up with cold grits. The Korino some shichlaim, they call it shichlaim. Mm -hmm. By the way, Tzipuri, is any value, is, I think is, I think it's Tzipuri, is the only town in Israel with uninterrupted Jewish presence. Really? So, maybe, so that's why the Tzipuri may be... Okay, interesting. They never left, they never left the land. Interesting. Now, the question is, did they mix it up just with cold? Because why would they mix it up with cold and heat it up if it tastes bad when it's heated up? So Tozo says they mixed it cold, heated it up, and then let it cool down again. So when it was cold again, now it started. Now, now the off taste was, was, was no longer present. Whatever. Okay, I'm already shocked. When they say nosing tam leaf gum, if it gives a bad, an off putting taste, it's permissible. Um, not in the case where you say, um, now this is a chumrah, okay, where you would say, like, oh, the reason we when we added this vinegar, it made this thing taste bad, is only because the, spi the spices weren't correct to begin with. Like we had a little too much salt or too little salt, too much, you know, cinnamon, too little cinnamon. And if we had had the right amount of spices, right, then it would have tasted good. With this so therefore, vinegar. with this extra vinegar. So therefore, let's consider the extra vinegar, no time with shevach, because in an ideal circumstance, it would have improved it. So that's a chumrah. You're saying marinate, even though so whatever, right? Even though I acknowledge that right now it made the taste bad, since it was only due to the contributing factors of the certain mix of spices, and had the spices been properly mixed, it would have been good. We should consider it in theory to be giving a good taste. Okay. So he so said that's maybe he would have done it before, but let's say you can fix it afterwards. Like, you know, in other words, with the vinegar, okay, now we can have the salt will be good. Does that make a difference? I, I, let me not deal with your case for a minute. I gotta just get through this case. Hold on. Okay. So don't say, oh, the only, um, you know, so the um, Ella, I'm sorry, I think I mis explained this again because it's, I 
keep on getting it's, it's like a tricky way to explain the phrase. Ella, let me just finish it. Ella, I'm sorry, this is I might have just said the, the second position. The, the, this is the Mahmir position. The Mahmir position is is that um is that <coughs> let's take hold on. Um what you do is you say Wait, hold on. Now I gotta reread it. I always get confused how to read this line. Hold on one second. Give me a second. Um, okay, don't say that the only Um, well, let me say it Rashi's way. I'm trying to read it just this way, which is confusing me. The way Rashi reads it is the following. Rashi reads it, at, at least it's easier to parse the words. Rashi reads it the following way. He says, even if it has a bad taste, don't try, don't say, don't try to discount the bad taste. No, you are going to discount. Oh my God! I keep, I keep I keep on going to the to the second reading, which is the maker one. Something in me is preventing me from reading it the Mahmir way. Hold on, <laughs> <laughs> people can do a good uh, pay or something. Okay. Um, I already went to the second. Oh, okay, fine. Right, 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 right. Okay. So here's the point. Okay. Don't try to discount the pagam. Is that right? As soon as I think I have it, it goes away from me. Um Let's try it the third time. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused here. So the point is, it is no St. Tom Lifgam, and you want to say, and he, what he's doing is he is limiting the cases where no St. Tom Lifgam is going to be mutter. No St. Tom, let me, let me work backwards. No St. Tom Lifgam is only going to be mutter if the... If it's clear that the pagam comes from this additive, but if it is possible that the pagam is coming from some other reason, like it is coming because the spices are a little off, and it's possible that that is the source of the pagam, then you can't say that this thing, that it's the pagam of this thing, which is the problem. Now that's what it's trying to say. Let me see if I can read that into the words. Let's try it again. The only type of gum, let's start from the last line, the only type of gum that is mutter is when it is clear that there's nothing else that's offered from the pot, and this is the only thing making it taste bad. But if you're able to say, that's what's tripping me up. Lo shiyamru means if you, not in a case when you are able to say, if you are able to say, that part of the problem might be that the spices are off, then you don't get to say no say time we've come. Okay, so let's read that again one more time. All right, Shakti, no say time we've come, Shia Amru. Lo, Shiyamu is not in a case when you are able to say that Kedera do Chaser Melech Yiser Melech Yiser Melech Chaser Tam Yiser Tam. It does not apply in a case where you're able to say that the spices are off. That's you're not allowed to say no St. Tom Leaf Gum because maybe it has to do with the spices. Ella, no, we got to get through this. Kosh ain't chasera klum. It only applies to a case where it's clear that the spices are right. The ain't an echel is mitnezer and it is the gum that makes it bad tasting. Okay, so that explanation is you cannot say no St. Tom Leaf Gum if it might be based. 
to a different mixture of the spices, okay? Or if those, or if the, either because you can attribute it to the spices or because the spices somehow in conjunction with this thing give it a bad taste, that's not nosing tam leaf gum. Nosing tam leaf gum is only when the spices are perfect and it still gives tam leaf gum. Okay, that's, what, that's version one. The Igadam, the others say, this is the opposite. Not it doesn't apply in the following case, but it means it's the opposite. Any time that you are a, that that the that the uh, you, um, you, that saying the spices are off does not undermine saying tam lifkam. Even if it's true that the spices are off. It doesn't matter what it would be in a theoretical circumstance that the spices would be better. Right now, there's a bad taste. So right now, so bottom line is, the two versions are, just to say it outside, because reading it inside is a little bit confusing me. But anyway, the two versions are, according to one version, it says that as long as you can attribute the gum to some other spices, you don't get to say no sing tam leaf gum. Or the way Tosa says it, as long as you can sort of say the only reason it's sort of, you know, in a theoretical case, it wouldn't be no sing tam leaf gum. So it's only tam leaf gum because of this circumstance. So if that's true, that you contribute it to other spices or there's a, or had the spices been good, it would have been a, would have been a good taste, then you don't get to say no sing tam leaf gum. You only get to say no sing tam leaf gum. This is the, the only, this is the Mahmir position. The only time you get to say no sing family gum is if it can't be attributed to anything else. And if, you know, and if even in a perfect case of the spices, it still would have been pagam. That's the narrow reading. The broader reading is you don't worry about hypotheticals of what could have been, or maybe it's something else. You just say, look, right now I know that there's an off-putting taste and therefore I'm going to therefore assume, and it doesn't matter what in theory this pot could have been, right now this contributed enough. Which one do we hold? We hold by the latter one. So let's just read that, okay? So, Amar Rabbi Yavo, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Actually, we're gonna to get to the fact that we pass them like the latter one in a minute, but just to tell you, that's the bottom way we pass them. Don't worry about these theoretical and hypotheticals. Reality is that the stuff gets added, it makes the taste off pudding, it's going to be okay. Now, I do wanna say something about the phrase of, um, of it's not eat, eaten because of this. So Rashi immediately says that's lav dafka. As you know, right? Why do we allow cooking in a tray? If you cooked in a tray kli, you know, and it's a day later, we say the food is okay. Why? Because we say after 24 hours, it's nursing time we've got. I'd like a show of hands of anybody who's ever had this happen and cooked in a tray kli a day later and, and, made, and made the food inedible. Obviously, it does not make the food inedible. Obviously, mm-hmm. these cases of no sing tam leaf gum, the food doesn't have to be inedible. It just has to not be that it could well. not as good as it was. So, so Rashi says, even though the language is ain't in echelos miknezeh, means that it makes it less desirable to be not that it's inedible. I say that though, because as we're gonna see when we get to tomorrow's daf, we'll see if we get to it today. Anyway, the one of the, the, the basis of no sing tam leaf gum, the paradigm from which we learn no sing tam leaf gum um, is a case where the thing is inedible. Mm-hmm. And that actually <laughs> leads some Rishonim to try to explain that the scenarios in the Gemara of no sing tam leaf gum, the thing really is inedible. Of course, it doesn't work, right? Clearly, these cases, a little vinegar on grits or whatever, and certainly the case of Kaelin, the stuff is not inedible. But the, the basis for it is both the source we're going to get to in a minute about an Vela, <laughs> an animal corpse, which is the source of it. In that case, it really was inedible. And the language here of Ainan Echelos Mutnezeh. So let me just tell you the Ra'az brilliant way of combining the two. The Ra'az says the following. He says, if he says, if the food is off-putting, let's say you had a little bit of chazer that went into uh, uh, that went into your, I don't know, uh, cake or whatever. Okay, and now yich, it tastes a little bit worse. Okay. So he says, if the food now tastes worse. That's evidence of the fact that were you to be able to extract the chazer taste by itself, it would be inedible. So the chazer taste it would be, becomes it would be edible. inedible. He's going with the idea that it has to be enon echeles. The food is necheles because this is only a trace amount. So if the food is nifkam a little, that's evidence that the chazer taste is enon echeles legamre. 
obviously there's no logical connection between those. But anyway, I did want to put it out there that obviously the Psa Kalacha is, is that it just has to be off-putting. It has to be a little bit negative taste. But the language in the Gemara here and, and, the, and the case we're going to get to by Nevela, it gives some Rishonim pause to think that uh, maybe it has to be the whole thing has to be inedible. Yes. Yeah, I would have clarified, but it's not your responsibility to then correct In other words, you could have fixed it. What? I mean, you could have fixed it. Like, oh, well, you know, like the way it is here, the cause, if I add a little bit of sugar, it'll be perfectly fine. Right. Doesn't so matter. It doesn't matter, right? No. Once right. it's nifkam and pagam alu sofi shpiach is fine. Once it enters in and it's nifkam, well, then it then it's sort of it's end. It's bottle end of story. Okay. Um. Actually, I should I should bracket that nifkam alu sofi shpiach is is somewhat of a question. But anyway, but you certainly that doesn't matter. That's exactly what Rachel Lucky is saying. You don't have to worry about hypotheticals. Right now, it's probably no, the first position. You might have yeah. to worry about that. Well, the whole point of the first question is you do have to worry about that. Okay. Now we get to another. Huge line here that's a little bit digression of nursing family's come, but not really because it steps back and talks mm -hmm. about the general principle of Kam Ki Ikar. There are a few sort of brief little claw lines that, that parallel this statement we're about to read, that, <laughs> that where, where the whole <coughs> discussion of what is the prob halachic problem of Tom gets debated in the Rishon, which is why you see <coughs> this, huge, this huge toso. So let's read this line. Armor Rabbi Yavar, Armor Rabbi Yochanan. Anytime you have the taste of something and its essence, and I'm going to get back and explain that word essence, a sewer is forbidden, the lokina lab, and actually you would get lashes. If you had chazer mixed up in your stew, and it was not just the taste of chazer, but the essence of chazer, and I'm going to get back to what that word essence means, and then you would actually get lashes for eating chazer. And that would be in a case where there was enough chazer in the stew that you ate a kazais of chazer in the time it takes to eat a half a loaf of bread. How big is a half a loaf of bread? Debate of Rashi and Rambam. One says it's eight uh, kazaisim, and one says it's nine kazaisim. So what that basically means is if you get chazer mixed up in your stew in a one to eight or one to nine proportion, so now once you eat nine kazaisim of stew or eight kazaisim of stew, you've eaten one kazais of chazer, and you've eaten that one kazais in that, like, you didn't, you didn't weren't watching it eating the soup slowly. You were eating it constantly. So you ate that in the time it takes to eat a pras. So then you have eaten a kazayas of chazer in the time it takes to eat a pras. That's the that's the normal time period in halacha where all is considered to be one act of eating. You've eaten a, kaz, a, a kazayas in one act of eating, and now we're going to give you. I mean, lashes. that's the report. You don't need an actual kazayas of chazer. Is that what you're saying? No, you need a kazayas of chazer. You will only get lashes if you ingested a kazayas of chazer. And you'll only get lashes if you can ingest that kazais of chazer during the time it takes to eat a pras. So Wait, it would be physically eat? impossible if it were in a proportion greater than one to eight to nine. If it's in a proportion of one to four and it took you twice as long as normal to eat it, you'd also get lashes. Right. Okay? But if you have you have chazer in your soup, it's mixed up, it's not only the taste, it's the essence. Then it's like you ate chazer, will give you lashes if you ate a, a kazayas in the sufficient amount of time, in the minimum amount of time. Turn the page. Tamo the lo mama show. If it is the taste of chazer, but not the essence of chazer, then asur the ain lo kinalav. Then it is forbidden, but you don't get lashes. Okay, and. But if it increased the taste, that now the taste is off-putting, it is forbidden. It is permissible. That's Tom Lifkam. So that's obviously the connection here. So let's just wrap up the Tom Lifkam, then I'm going to go back and explain the earlier line. The Lema Inosan Tom Lifkam, which I want to say Reba. Why do you say Inosan? Just if it gave an off-putting taste, it's permissible. Even there are other things that contribute to the off-putting taste, like the salt or the spices or whatever. If this increased the off-putting taste. It wasn't the only source of it, but it was an additional source, like the cases that the spices are off. Nevertheless, it's permissible. Michael is very happy. We actually passed it. Okay, so Valach is like the last language. It doesn't have to, you don't talk about theoretically have the spices been different. As long as in the current scenario it added off-putting taste, it's permissible. Now, let's, what is the difference between Tamo Umama Show and Tamo Velo Mama Show? So, Rashi says it's a physical difference. Okay, Tamo Umama Show would be a case where the thing itself, basically, let's say you had a case of, I don't know, a chazer soup, uh, you know, like a dissolved chazer that fell into chicken soup. That would be Mama Show because it's all the same. It's like liquid and liquid. Or a piece of chazer 
that fell into uh, to your to your chalent, and you can't identify where the piece of chazer is. Okay, that would be mama show because it's considered to be like it's the thing itself. But says Rashi, let's say you basically had you were doing a steak, and a drop of chazer soup or whatever dissolved chazer fell on your steak. That would be ta'amo velo mama show. Why? Because it's a liquid that's being absorbed into a solid. It is considered in that case that you only have the taste of the thing and not the thing itself. The thing itself is the hard solid of the steak, and you have some chazer taste that got in here, okay? So Rashi, without figuring out exactly where to draw the line, Rashi says the difference is a physical one. And for Rashi, okay, the idea, right, whenever people have learned, you know, Kashras learned, have this principle of tam ki ikar, the taste is like the thing itself. So what Rashi says is that debate is the taste like the thing itself. It's actually debated in the Gemara. Is that a Torah principle or not? Is in the case of Ta'amo the low mama show. Something like this, like a drop of chazer, of trazer soup being absorbed into a steak. But when you have Ta'amo u mama show, let's, I'll give you a simpler example. You're making hamburger and you take some chazer and you add in a little chazer and you grind it all up with the beef. <laughs> okay, Rashi says that's not a Tom Kiker question. That's a question of the thing itself. It's all it's mixed up. Okay, you've got you know you got ground chazer and ground beef, and it's all mixed up. That's mama show. Everybody that's agrees. Mama show. That's how um, mama show. Everybody <laughs> agrees that that's doraita. That's not batel. You get lashes for chazer because I for teachilas pras. The tamo umama show is like a drop of the chazer soup that gets absorbed into the hamburger meat. And that's the issue of Tam Ki Ikar. And therefore, Rashi said, since the Gemara concludes, Ain Lokina Lav, you don't get lashes, Rashi says the conclusion of this Gemara is Tam Ki Ikar is Lav Do Raito. The Tam Ki Ikar is not a biblical principle. So all the concerns of all your pots and all that type of stuff or whatever, we'll get to pots in a minute, that is only a rabbinic concern. That is not a biblical concern. Tam Kikar is not the right. It's only a problem when you have the essence of the thing itself. Okay, like hamburger, ground hamburger mixed up with ground uh, chaz. Okay, that's Rosh. Tosvos. Where did he say this? Um, um, well, here, he doesn't spell it out here. He says, anyway, Tosvos has a long explanation where he quotes Rosh and spells it out at the beginning of the Tosvos summer of the Elkanah. It's other Rashi's as well, okay? There's like, these are, there are a lot of sukyas, okay? This is a composite position. Now, Tozo says, there, there's another more interesting read, which is a variation of Rashi, without getting to describing the difference between Mama Show and not Mama Show, which is the <laughs> following discussion. <coughs> Even if Tom Kikar is Doraita, that doesn't necessarily mean you get lashes. Let's say you say Tom of Chazer is like Chazer. How, what, is the word of, what is the meaning of that word, is like? The letter kit, Tom is kit ikar. Does it mean that it's really chazer and you'll get lashes for eating it? Or does it mean, no, it's asr. The same with chazer is asr, the Torah asr, the taste of chazer. But it's a different type of an isr. It's an isr learned from a different pasuk. It's a more generic isr. Okay, it's like when you say, you know, so therefore... What about synthetic, like bagels? Okay, I'm not talking about that. That is a hope completely different. When we say Tom, it doesn't mean that if you could replicate the Tom, yeah. it means Tom that derives from the actual physical thing itself. Okay, but anyway, this approach would say, just because the Gemara says you don't get lashes, doesn't mean it's not the right though. The reason you might get lashes might be that it is the right though, but it's a different isser. It's not chazer. It's the taste of chazer, and that's a different isser, so you don't get lashes. A third possibility is it's the right though, but you know why you don't get lashes? Because maybe the point of the Gemara is that the difference of mama show and not mama show is not with the, a physical difference, but it's the proportions. When it's kezayis b'cheachilas pras, then you're getting lashes because you ate a kezayis worth. And Tom over low mama show, you're not getting lashes because you didn't eat a kazai's worth. There's a scenario where it's less than kazai's was pras. Okay? So there's a lot of different ways of reading this Gemara and what is the line between them. For example, Ramam says, Tom Kikar is your right though when it's the proportions of kazai's was pras. When it's not those proportions, it's Durabana. So anyway, a lot of different ways of reading it, but just to quickly review, Rashi says the difference is a physical difference of what is the type of way in which the things are mixed and what's the, what's the physical reality of the Isser compared to that of the Heter. And that he says the conclusion of this Gemara is that Mama Show is obviously Doraita. That's like the hamburger case. Ta Tom <coughs> is not Doraita. But other ways of reading it is that Tom is still right, but it's not the same Isser, or Tom is still right, but you didn't eat enough to be Chayev, or, you know, 
that um, that Tom Kikar is Doraita only when it's Kizayis Bechtei Pras. It's sort of how Rambam reads it. Okay, so anyway, but the, how to parse this and how to parse what is Tom and what is Mama Show? Okay, is a big debate in the Rishonim and a big debate whether because we say Tom Kikar is Doraita or not. Yes, Charlie. So this idea that because you didn't need enough. I mean, that would go along with what we say, Shishir Asr Min HaTorah, right. but you don't get rabbis. Exactly. But that, isn't that Rabbi Yochanan's position? Yeah, we're passing that way. Yeah, this is Rabbi Yochanan also, by the way. So it is, does fit with Rabbi Yochanan's position of Chatz Shir. So that is a way of reading the second part of Tam Ovalo Mama Show. Okay, now let's continue. Amar of Ghana, me Dive Kulam Nioma from everybody we said until now, Rabbi Yochanan's statement, the Shlakish's statement, all these statements, Vahachi Hilchosov, the mission of Tam Lifgam, from all of them they all agree, no sin Tam Lifgam Muta, the Tam Lifgam is permissible. Amalei Abai, so Abai said to Bishle Mamikulu Lachai, all the other statements we said, I agree with you. El Rish Lakish, when Rish Lakish was explaining the position, Rish Lakish said, Amru Kam. I mean, Rish Lakish said, No St. Tom's Lif Kam Sha Amru, Lo Sha Yomer Kadei Rezeh. So he was sort of explaining, explicating the position of those who held it. Okay, Vilelo Sfirale, there's not clear that he personally held of that position. Okay, anyway, but nevertheless, the upshot is, No St. Tom's Lif Kam is Mutter. So the Gemara says, Michlal, the Ikalaman Damar, no Saint Tom Lifkam Usr. Do you need to say that there's anybody who would say that bad taste is, is forbidden? So the Gemara says, In, yes, that Tanya, we turn to Brysa. Echo no Saint Tom Lifkam, but Echo no Saint Tom Lishevach Usr. There you go. It was an obvious softball question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, allowed us to introduce this Brysa. Rabbi Mayer says that positive taste actually, I'm sorry, negative taste actually is forbidden, just like positive taste. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Lishevach Usr, Lifkam Mutar. But Reb Shimon is the one who we pass and like. He says that bad taste is okay. You don't usually do that, right? Pass like Reb Shimon against Reb Meir. Yeah. My time is Reb Meir. Now, now we get to the source of all of this stuff. What's the reason of Reb Meir? Gomar mi giule of the kochavim. He learns it out from giu. Giu is like the like this the disgusting taste, which is means tamlif gam of the of the vessels of non Jews. That doesn't mean like it's not like a negative statement about non Jews, but anyway, it's uh, maybe, no, it's it's maybe it is what it's another it's root in the hagala. It's another root hagala to boil to expunge. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, like the, uh, I thought it was like lo tigal nachiyachem because that's why it's tamlif gam. How does it translate that word, Charlie, over there? Persian. The purging. Purging. It's like sponge, right? Huh. That's what it is. It's not the you mean sponge. the you mean the cooking together? Maybe. Oh, that's so interesting. I always assumed it meant the pagam taste that comes from their kalim. Maybe. Okay. Nigiule of the kochavim. Now, um, yeah, I guess so. I hear your point. Okay. You, now, which basically means when the Torah said that you had to, they, they talk, took all those vessels from the Midianites, and the Torah said, pass it through the fire, pass it through hot water. Now, the Peshat of those Psukim is talking about a type of a way of Tahara, of, mm-hmm. uh, uh, of Tum and Tahara. Of course, it's funny, since when you have Tahara by fire. So, therefore, Chazal learned that the Peshat of those Psukim is that it's a way of kashering the vessels that they took from the Midianites. So, if you have to kasher it, it means that there would be a problem from the Torah using the vessels. But why is that? Wouldn't the taste be off-putting, the taste that's absorbed in the vessels? So if the Torah says it's forbidden, that obviously shows you that even an off-putting taste is still forbidden. Yule of the Kochavim, so the taste that's expunged or expelled from the vessels, lav no sin tam lif kamhu. It's bad, it's off-putting taste. For Asa Rachmana, the Torah said you can't use those vessels. Hachanami lo shows. So that's a general principle that off-putting taste is no good. So the Edach, now what would Reb Shimon say back? No, the Torah only forbade them using those vessels on the day itself that it was captured, which one wonders why they have to go through all that effort of cleansing it or whatever, just wait a day. But I guess the Torah wanted to teach us laws of Kasher and Caleb. Anyway, and on the day itself that it was absorbed, the taste isn't off-putting. And that's the only reason it was forbidden. Okay, but if it was a day later, the Torah would not have forbade it because off-putting taste is not a problem. The Edach, what would Rebbe Meir say back? No, even on the same day itself, it's a little off-putting, and therefore, even if, any way in which the Torah forbade it is a proof that bad taste is okay. Now, um, 
Okay, so that's that issue. I should say, and I'll, I'll say one sentence about the issue of Kalin, because I mentioned before a debate if Tom, is Tom Kikar do right or not? So for example, Rambam rules that Tom Kikar is not do right uh, unless it's kezayis b'chdechus pras, unless it's a high proportion of the mixture, like one eighth. And he also rules, though, that the, it sounds like he rules that the Isra of using a kli ben, ben yomo, ba yomo is, um, is a do right. How do you reconcile those two? So there is a Gemara that basically says, look, maybe Kalin is a chiddush, meaning it's maybe it's not based on the principle of Tom. Maybe Tom Tom Kikar is not the right, uh, but nevertheless, if if you cooked chazer in this pot, it becomes a chazer pot, and the Torah doesn't want us to cook in it. So there's a question of lechatchila letting us cook in it, which could be a separate issue from how the Torah treats Tom in general. Okay, but the, but the, everybody get the point? Like the fact that the Torah says don't use a chazer pot isn't a proof. That the Torah treats the time of Chazer as being a problem. Okay, but nevertheless, this Gemara assumes that they are intimately linked. So Rabbi Meir says if the Torah forbids us to use those pots, even when it's a bad taste, it shows that bad taste is a problem. And Rabbi Shimon says back, I don't think the Torah's case was when it was a bad or an off putting taste. Okay, so now the Gemara continues. Um, Rabbi Shimon, my time. So now we understand where Rabbi Meir gets his idea that it's Usr. Where does Rabbi Shimon get his idea that it's mutter? So the verse says the following. Hold on. Rabbi Shimon, my time. At the time, we taught him Brisa. Loto chlu kol nevela. Lager shabri shabrecha. Don't eat any uh, any car uh, uh, carcass of an animal. Give it to the uh, stranger in your gates. Only if it's fit for the stranger, meaning if it's edible by human consumption, is it called a nevela. If it's not edible, it's not an avela. And this tom is not, what, edible? But it is edible. Right. So that's the whole problem I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And that goes to the language of ein and echeles. But as we said before, the taste is edible. It's just off-putting. So I'll get back to that in a minute. But that's his principle. There we learn the idea that tom leaf gum is permissible. Rebbe Mayer. What would Rebbe Meir say? He would say, That's coming to, no, the case of a nevela that's permissible is if the moment it died, it was inedible. Like it was already, you know, disease ridden in life and the moment it died, it was inedible. But once it started as and edible, what? and therefore if it's not roy <laughs> to eat at all, it's mutter. If it never started life, it's roy to eat. But you can eat a nevela if it was not... I'm sorry, what you saying? Or much to like, what does that mean? Meaning, I could eat it available if it was never. Well, that's also what that's also what Rabbi Shimon is saying. Rabbi Shimon is saying this animal dies, and then the meat becomes inedible. It becomes permissible to eat. Okay, it has to be royal legair. And from there, we learn that a taste that becomes inedible is permissible. Is permissible to be eaten, or becomes bad is permissible to be eaten. Rabbi Meir says the only time the dead nevela that's inedible is permissible to be eaten is if it was inedible from the moment it died. Okay, then it never was defined as usr. But if from the if it was started when it died, it was edible, and then it became inedible since it started its status as usr. That status no, doesn't that mean it, it a trip, it was like you know alive and like no, 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 no. That means it's it's not going to survive. Let's say it's just I don't know. It's got some disease. It's eating it. It's not fatal. In the moment, no, nobody would eat it even from the second I mean, it died. I can eat that and fail. Yeah. Same, I mean, how, why are you more surprised by that than Rebbe Shimon? Rebbe Shimon says even if it died and Honestly, it wasn't you edible, you still give it to the gear or something. No, that ain't a real gear, ain't a creel in avela. Once it's inedible, it's not an avela. Rabbi Meir agrees to that principle. He just says that would only be if it started life inedible. This is a general halachic principle, which I call the stikinius principle, which is that once something gets a halachic status, you need a higher threshold for it to lose it than if it never had that status to begin with. Okay? Once somebody, once you hire somebody, it's a lot harder to fire them than if you never hired them in the first place. Okay, so that's what Rabbi, so Rabbi Meir says if it started off as edible, then it remains usr even if it becomes inedible. Rabbi Meir, huli mutes rucha made kara. But the only time the Torah permit, pro, pro, hit, permits it is when it was never edible. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon would say back, you wouldn't even have needed a pasuk to tell you that. Afra ba'almahu. That's just dirt. That's not even food. That's not even called an avela. The chiddush of the Torah is even if it started as edible and became inedible, it, now it becomes permissible. Now, here's my question, which is, 
which all of you show in a mask. It's not my question. It's a question anybody would ask. What the heck does an inedible novella have to do with Tom Leaf Gum? Mm -hmm. Tom Leaf Gum is just slightly off putting. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, at least some Rishon, the Ragnar, whatever, to try to jump through hoops and to try to explain all the cases in the Gemara that the food is inedible. You can't really do that. So, then it leads to another creative explanation by the Ra'ah to say that, okay, the food is edible, but if the food is, if the taste is off putting, it's evidence that the Tom, were you to be able to extract it, would be inedible, which is a little bit crazy, you know? Go ahead and take some Chazer thing and mix it into my, I don't know, strawberries, it's going to be off-putting, even though the chazer taste by itself might be very good, right? So, I don't know, maybe some people like sticking in strawberries. Okay, so the general consensus is, you're right, it's the the food is edible, the tom by itself is edible, but he, it's an analogy. Remember how in, when we did our SATs, we did these analogies, right? A is to B is whatever. So here's the analogy, okay? Here's the analogy. Nevela meat is to inedible as Nevela tan is to like in is to bad taste. Why? Because inedible doesn't mean like physically inedible, right? It's not like it's impossible. I would gag. Okay, inedible really means bad tasting. Right. Well, not not bad tasting. Right. No one would, no one would wants it. to eat it. So this is food is to some it is is to something that no one wants to eat, as taste is to something that no one wants to taste. Okay? So that the, basically by analogy, for food to become mutter, if you're dealing with a, an object of food, it has to turn into something that no normal person wants to eat. When you're dealing with the taste of the vela that's mixed into my stew or that's into, mixed into my strawberries or whatever it might be, as taste, if it's a taste that nobody wants to taste, that's not the tom that the Torah forbade. forbade. When the Torah says tom is a problem, that only means good taste is a problem. Okay? I, every time I say this, I think about that uh, that, that the starkest ad. When I said this to my students, they had no idea what I was talking about, but I grew up with this. And remember, Charlie, oh, Darkest doesn't want tunas with good taste. Darkest dark wants tunas that taste good. good. Okay, so anyway, so taste, the same way the only food that is usser is food that's fit to be eaten, the only taste that is usser is taste that is fit to be tasted, that people want to taste, okay? So taste that you don't want to taste is not the taste that the Torah forbids. That is the general way in which we be shown and read this. So this, just, let me try to understand something. So just with the novella, it's permissible, we're saying, right? Just wait a little while until it gets bad. Yeah. And then you can eat it. Yeah, but so who wants to eat stuff that nobody wants to eat? No, no, no. But then with the Tom of Gam, maybe now it's okay. Let me just wait a little. Then it'll be okay. Okay, so that's what the Gemara is about to exactly discuss. Is about this question of, since it seems that the debate of Rebbe Meir and Rebbe Shimon is about um, is about when it when it started good and now it's bad. So applying that to the Tom case, that should mean that when we say Tom Leaf Gum is okay, it's even if it started good and became right. bad. But just a minute ago we said when it started good and became bad, it remains right. it remains a problem. Right. So that's exactly what the Gemara now is going to discuss. So let's read a little bit further, get a little ahead. Okay. So the Gemara says like this. I'm not Ula because this is exactly a follow up to what Michael said. The debate about Rebbe Meir and Rebbe Shimon is when the food is when the taste started good, it became bad, just like that's their debate by the day. Right. So Shimon just started good. It doesn't mean like it got better. No, it made the food that it was added to taste better. And now it made the food that it was added to taste worse. Right. About Pagan, right. Because that's parallels their debate by Nevela. If it started by adding a bad taste, everybody would agree that it's permissible. That's paralleling the Nevela debate. So when this vinegar got mixed up to the grits, it's forbidden. This seems to be a case where the taste started off as bad. And nevertheless, Rebbe Mayer says it's a forbi forbidden. Chaga doesn't even understand the bright that he's reading. If he has the chutzpah to ask a question from it, who says, who, who told him that it started off tasting bad? I'm, now, I don't know why he, so he's so insulting of Chaga. It was a reasonable read of the case. But anyway, I'm going to say the case was, was that it started off by tasting good, that it fell into cold grits. 
Okay, and then you cook them up. That's the debate. So the same way we had that discussion earlier, I'm going to read their debates where it started off good and it now became bad. That's Ula's position. Rabbi Yochanan, I'm now Rabbi Yochanan says, but poge me karama chlokes. No, they debate only when it, their debate is when it started off bad. So the Gemara says, Ibailu, we were asked the question, would he say that that's a debate, but if it started off good, everybody would say it's forbidden, which was the sense one got at the, the beginning of today's staff. Oh, Dioma, or would we say, that the one who says it's permissible would say it's permissible in both cases, and the one who says forbidden would say it's forbidden in both cases. So the Gemara says, take, we don't know. Now, I'll say one sentence about what Michael wants to ask, which is, how can we say they're debating the case of Poge Meikara, don't we say by the Nevewa that if it's Poge Meikara, that if it tastes bad from the very beginning, Rip Meir agrees it's okay. So Tosa says, here's the difference, and it gets a little bit to this whole discussion a minute ago. The Nevela, when it began its life as usher food, began as permissible, was Pogo Meikara. This Chazer taste, this Chazer stew, began its life as usher. It already is usher as Chazer stew. When we say Pogo Meikara, it only means in its, in, its, in its presence in the mixture, if from the very outset the mixture was bad tasting. But just because you allow a Nevela that was never edible to be mutter, it's not the same, right? Here you've got your dead animal, okay? I don't know how I'll make it an animal and not a person, okay? The X in the eyes. Okay, it never, it never was Nevela, okay? That's, you know, that's Rucha Meikara. Well, it was never Nevela. It, it never, it never was an Usr Nevela. It never was Usr. As soon as it became a Nevela, it was Mutha, okay? Whereas in this case... I mean, it was like one of these... That's Rebbe Mayer's case of Rucha Meikara, okay? Whereas in this case, okay, here's your Chazer stew, Okay, and now this is Usr, right? This starts in life as Usr. Okay, and here comes your Chalan. Chazer Zimr is. And a little drop of here goes into this. That is a case of Pogum. Well, I don't know if Chazer would make the Chalan taste bad, whatever it is. It's some type of a sweet thing, compote. Okay, I don't know. Okay, anyway, that's Pogum Meikara, but in the mixture, it started its life as bad tasting. But but that does, but it's but it, so it, it started as Asr Chazer. So Tosa says even if you say this is okay, does mean Pogum Meikara is okay. Since this started as Asr Chazer, it'll remain it even if yes. in the mixture it began as right. So basis. so the, the analogy then would be if it was like rancid Chazer stew. Exactly. So that obviously yeah. is okay. All right. So this is the debate when they're debating um, the case of Tom Leaf Gam. Um, uh, um, and when we say it's mutter, are we talking about only when it started in the mixture as bad taste, or even if the mixture started good and became bad? And that's the way. Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Yochanan is more machmir, um, and Rabbi Yochanan says it's only when, they're, they're debating only when in the, um, when, or not only, but we're going to say only, when it started bad, but everybody would agree is what we're going to say. We have Now we said take it, but we're going to move to say, but according to Rabbi Yochanan, when it started good in the mixture and became bad, like we said at the beginning of today's daf, everybody would agree that that would be usher. Okay, so let's just read a little bit more. We'll get to the bottom of the daf, so we'll get a little ahead. Amar Avach, Amar, said Rav after Isa Lahad Rabbi Yochanan will Tanya Labi Mas Nisan, is it possible that Rabbi Yochanan is right that they debate a case about Pogum Kara and it's never, and we, we wouldn't find anything like this in a Mishnah? So Nafatak the Ashkach, he went and he exp- and he investigated and he found the following mission that supports Rabbi Yochanan. Now, so or Shel Chulin, Shenavalotoch Isa Ah. So now, uh, in anticipation of Pesach, we're getting some cases about dough. Okay. okay, so you have some sourdough of Chulin that fell into the bread. The age broke the Lahachmitz, and there's enough sourdough to cause it to ferment. The Chmitz, and it caused it to ferment. Then afterwards fell some forbidden sour, truma sourdough, or kilayim sourdough. Okay? The yesh broke de la and that has enough to ferment. Now the thing is, once you have the right amount of sourdough, any additional sourdough, any additional fermenting is tam leaf gum. Okay? Makes it worse. You don't want too much sourdough. All right? So this additional thing is Tom Leaf Gum. So that's Pogo Meikara. Everybody get it? Because as soon as the bad sourdough, the usher sourdough fell in, it already was doing a bad stuff. Okay? Um, it's usher. It's forbidden. Rip Shimon Matir. Rip Shimon allows it. It's exactly this debate. It's Pogo from the very beginning. 
it, and from the very and and still the first Tanakama Rebbe Meir says it's forbidden. So you see that they argue in a case of Pogume Kara. Maybe the reason Rebbe Meir forbids there is not that Rebbe Meir in general were, would forbid by Pogome Kara, but he actually says too much sourdough is not necessarily pogame because it makes the dough now, um, you know, into, it might make the dough less good as bread, but it makes the dough better as a starter. So therefore, when you get the sourdough mixing up into dough, you can use this new mixture as an expanded starter. What is this? sourdough? Is dough that's used to ferment other? Yes, yes. So therefore, it's we're also called a starter or a culture. So therefore, um, and so therefore, he says that um, that that the reason Rabbi Meir forbids Rabbi Meir might in general say pogame car is okay, but here he forbids because it's not only pogame; it actually makes the dough usable in a different type of a way. Okay. So now the Gemara is going to say Tashma. Let's try again. So Truma, Isa. So let's say the Truma and the Chulin fell at the same time. Okay, which is hard to therefore define it whether the Truma one is doing a bad job or a good job because the total amount is too much, but they fell at the same time, so you don't know which one to blame it on. Okay, and they may so that each one was enough together. It was too much. The Usser, it's forbidden. Reb Shimon Matir. So that's not a good proof because it's not clear how you conceptualize that. Nafun shall truma tchila. Now, if the truma fell first, divya kol asur. Everybody would agree that's forbidden. So, by the way, that's a case of hishpiach ulibasov pagam, right? The truma fell in, made it better. In the end, the whole stuff tastes bad because too much sourdough fell in, and that remains forbidden. So, by the way, this is going to be a proof to, to Reb Yochanan. There it's hishpiach ulibasov pagam, and everybody agrees that it's forbidden. So this breaker really is a proof to Rabbi Yochanan and makes it clear that they're on, they only debate Pogei Mek Tchila. Hishpech Lebzov Pagam, everybody agrees is forbidden. Novel Shel Chulim Vakach Nav Shel Truma, which was our case. Oh, Shel Kilai Akerem, Oh, Shel Kilai Akerem, Oser Reb Shimon Matir, okay, which is the case of, which is the case of Pogei Mek Tchila. Okay, so this bright is basically going to say that because of these three cases, it's pretty clear that pogamitchila, that's their debate, when the truma, when the truma fell after when it was too when after the other sourdough was there. So it, from the very outset, the truma added a bad taste. That's their debate. But if the truma fell first, everybody agrees it remains Asr. So Pogum, so Hishpiach Lubasov Pagam, everybody agrees is Asr. Pogum Lubasov Hishpiach, that's the debate. Um, excuse me. Pogam mitchila, that's the debate. Okay, mishpiach l'besof pagam, everybody agrees is us. So the Gemara says, "Rahacha de pagam meikara upliga." Here again, when the truma fell second, so from the moment the truma fell, it fell in, it added a bad taste, and that's the debate. So that's proof to Rabbi Yochanan. Okay, v'chi teima hachanami. Could Rabbi Zera, let's just say, oh, it's like Rabbi Zera. The only reason Rabbi Meir says it's forbidden is not that Rabbi Meir really has a problem with Pogamitrila, but that because it is not, he says it's not Pogam, because it just makes it better to use a sta- sourdough. So Tashma, come in here. Misefa. And so fine. From the earlier case about the sourdough that Rebbe Meir said it's forbidden, you can't prove it. Maybe it's a special issue about sourdough. But how about this case? Wine that fell on these lentils and vinegar that fell on the grits, Usr, Reb Shimon Matir. Again, the simple reading of this is that it is tasting bad from the very outset. Upliga. So again, the simple reading of all of this is that they're arguing on cases where it's bad tasting from the outset. Oh, maybe this is like Ula said. No, no, no. The case was that initially it was cold, and then it was heated up, and it wasn't bad tasting at the outset. But you can't say that. Because to say that this case was that it started cold and good, and then it became bad, would have Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Shimon arguing in a case of Hishpirch Lebesov Pagam. But from the case of the, of the sourdough, you see that they agree that that's a problem. Okay, so that's getting a little confusing. But here are the cases. Okay, so you have one case, which is number one is truma, and then stage number one, and stage number two is so here's the truma is already in it, and then the coolant goes in. Okay, so that's a case which is which is a case of Ishpiach, Ulubasov, 
Hagam. And the Gemara said in this case, Vehakol Asuya. Right? Because initially the trimmer was good. Okay, the other that's case number one. The other case is first you had Hulin, and then you had here's the Hulin, then you had the Truma fall in. Then you had the Truma. So when the Truma fell in, what, what did the Truma do? Okay, so in this case, in the very moment the Truma fell in, okay, it was bad. So that's a case of Hagam Itchila. And that the conclusion is is that is the machloke. So that's a pretty good proof for Abishin. In this case, you should be able to observe Pagam di Verkolasur. This case is where it's Pagam Mitrila from the moment the Truma fell in with Pogin is the Machlokas. Now you'll say one minute. Maybe the reason Rebbe Mayer forbids this is because it's not really Pogain. It's because it actually makes it better as yeast. Ah, says the Gemara, but we've got a third case. The third case is the chometz that falls into the greasy. Okay? And we're going to assume that that's a case of pagam mitchila. And still, we're going to see machloket. So, you see, pagam mitchila is a machloket. And yishbiyah, so pagam, tibayah kolasur, that's exactly a pushtrev yokna. Now, you want to get out of this and say, maybe it was all cold. And if it was all cold, it was yishbiyah, so pagam. But you can't say that this is Yishmiyach Abbasov Pagam, because here they debate, and here Yishmiyach Abbasov Pagam, they all agree as Asr. Okay? Mm-hmm. So since here you see they are Yishmiyach Abbasov Pagam, they all agree as Asr, we have to read this case, Kipshuto, then it's Pagam Mitchila, and therefore it's Machlokas, and therefore the whole thing is a proof to Rebbe Yochanan. So let's just finish that. You want to read this, and also it started off cold, and it was Pagam. But then they wouldn't be debating that. Pagam. Here's the case of Pagam, and everybody agrees it's forbidden. So how? So therefore, the only way this could be a machlokes is if this is a case of Pagam mitchila. And love shema minat bepagam mekar machlokes So you see. A debate pagam mitchila, and this is not special because it's yeast and sourdough, and they agree with ishbeich l'besov pagam. So actually, not only is it evidence for Yochanan, but it also shows that the only place they debate is pagam mitchila, and that's why we started today's daf to say if it's ishbeich l'besov pagam, it's aser. So nosin tam lifkam, yes is aser, uh, yes is mutter, but only if it's pogam mitchila. And that's the debate of Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Meir. We rule like Rabbi Shimon that when it's Pogain Mitchila, it's Mutter. Once the thing originally becomes Aser, it remains Aser, and everybody agrees in that case, you cannot rely on those family Okay, we'll end with that. Yep. Right, question. Yeah. Why 